Hello and welcome to our Research Tracks interviews ahead of the ACM Hypertext 2024 conference. I am Mariusz Pisarski, the General Chair, and today we discuss the readership and experience with interactive and social media track. With me is Professor Anna Lachel from Jagiellonian University in Poland and Dr. Lovro Skopianec from the University of Zagreb in Croatia. Could you tell us a bit more about this very interesting track, its scope and its context? Well, I guess this is, a, in some regards, this is a response to the changed um, conditions and changed environment for a hypertextual practice, or practice of hypertext, so to speak, uh, because um, I think increasingly internet is about um, social media uh, in terms of platforms, but also practices, right? So uh, basically reading and writing uh, becomes um, much more socially oriented. Uh, and on the other hand, um, the, the, all those social interactions happen within the framework of uh, internet platforms uh, understood in terms of uh, digital capitalism, or at least this is how um, I understand it. So I, I thought that it would be really interesting to actually have um, uh, a, um, a more detailed insight into, um, into um, kind of transformations that um, the, the real culture underwent uh, under the conditions, so to speak. So uh, we're very much looking forward to all uh, contributions that um, emphasize those aspects in hi hypertextual reading, writing processes. That would be my take on it. And if I just may add, we are welcoming contributions in both that refer both to uh, new media, let's say born digital uh, texts, and also older forms of texts spanning, you know, the history of European and other uh, literatures that have been reimagined in some way. So think, let's say, um, a popular poem or a novel or even an unpopular one that's being, you know, kind of pulled out in the digital age uh, because it, it is possible now it is being reimagined or rewritten, remedialized in the digital age with uh, additional, let's say, animations and hypertextual uh, possibilities. So the, the, the span, let's say the time span of the media that we are looking forward to work with is unlimited so not just something more digital mm -hmm. that including all the media ever made especially texts yes this is a this is a i think very um insightful remark because of course when we trace you know when we trace uh, back um uh, some histories around hypertext very often we see uh, the whole plethora of practices uh, that predate actual digital media. So I think this is a really interesting aspect. So um, in other words, uh, we could look into, for example, some popular literature or, or popular practices around writing. And, you know, the example that often comes to mind is, for example, Mary Shelley Frankenstein, that was, you know, the outcome of certain, I would say, um, literary game, right? Um, during this winter, the, during the summer without uh, sun, uh, that happened in UK in the 19th, 19th century. So, uh, so definitely, this is also a point of interest for for us as chairs, tracing back uh, some histories. And I'm using uh, plural uh, deliberately here because, of course, there's n much more than just one linear history. There is actually many histories, many genealogies. And uh, thank you, Lovra, for emphasizing that because uh, I think we're also looking forward to contributions that can make some um some um impact on, on the historical understanding of of those forms thank you very much from what you have said it seems that uh, we can engage several different communities uh, even those that uh, would not uh, uh, think of themselves as, as hypertext communities what is your take on on the submissions uh, examples of submissions that can be accepted and the communities that you could engage um well for me what, what i would put uh you know forward first would be the experiences that the digital media uh as, as general you know uh, category including social digital social media uh, affords because it's not just reading and writing anymore there's a lot a whole lot of more practices that are more detailed such as uh, you know, skimming, browsing, misreading that mm -hmm. have existed, again, historically, but now they are being 
uh, um, reimagined or they're being um let's say uh, rewritten as we speak so that that's the the, the uh, i think i'm personally most interested in the experiences of reading um not just literary texts although as a literary scholar that is my you know within my my focus but also all kinds of texts that uh kind of cross the divide between close and distant reading because we are used to distant reading on the screen right? skinning for information the so-called f or e pattern of reading but also there uh, there's a lot of glossing there's reading and writing going on and it's by the way why our, our, our track is kind of uh, intertwined also with one of the previous checks on writing but uh, uh, I, I would be very interested in um, uh, all kinds of deep close reading the, the sort of what we could we could call fandom reading which uh, also results in detailed analyses right of text of whatever whatever genre it can be tv shows uh, computer games other texts and so on so whatever deep practice of reading exists uh, that that is you know tw intertwined with a personal experience. That's I think what we would both be interested in. What the track is interested in, but also uh, uh, the 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 practices on their own as as they occur w while reading in a digital environment. Yeah, I'm I, as a, as as a uh, scholar in cultural studies primarily, and especially in media art. Uh, I'm also interested actually in what. Um, constitutes you know reading and writing practices today in terms of uh precisely you know what Lovro has just said uh to what extent reading and writing can be also considered um kind of embodied practice practice and especially you know all those minor minor gestual um um uh, practices of you know sharing for example right where, where it is enough to, to just click and and you know uh and memes or um or short video clips just travel across you know um uh, across the internet right and um, and very often discussing the topics with my students i hear from them you know to what extent um uh, participating for example in uh, meme culture to what extent this participation requires a really sophisticated and intrinsic intrinsic ways of reading right to, to i mean what kind of skills people need to have in reading those very dense cultural forms right and um, in order to under, to understand some kind of meaning not only um, um do you need to uh, be um well versed in the recent um internet passions phenomena and you know uh, popular um uh, hap happenings but also but we also need to be um kind of um intertextually prolific you know so to speak so i'm really interested in all those new uh, internet realms and especially in tiktok because tiktok is such an amazing environment in many regards of course of course uh, it is also um a uh, really complex uh, topic because, you know, TikTok is also um, one of those companies that sort of shape, you know, um, uh, today's internet. So so there, there's much more than just reading, writing practices. But I'm really interested in, you know, based on what I see on TikTok, um, I'm really interested in uh, to what extent TikTok users are savvy media um, producers. If I might just add, like literally one one term that I think would be useful for for the for those wanting to apply, or rather two terms, competences, right? Reading competences. So what, for instance, if you see a short video, what kind of comp? If you see a lot of them, what kind of competences do you glean? Can you say immediately or within, let's say, a few seconds, this is well made, this is professionally mm -hmm. made, this might be fake, this might be fake news altogether, this might be AI generated or not. Uh, in the same way that you know traditional practices of reading uh, in you know, literary texts um, you included their own competence, meaning like you scan the first page of a text and you can tell immediately this is a, without even reading. This is a sonnet. This is written in iambic mm -hmm. verse. This is uh, an epic. This is a novel, and so on and so forth. Or this is written by a recognized author, right? I've heard about mm -hmm. this author mm -hmm. before. So competences and also allowances, right? What does what does a digitally you know formed and performed text allow you? to see, to read, uh, and maybe react, and what does it not? Uh, mm -hmm. Because it's it's much more interactive, yeah. right? So well, when when we are at, <clears throat> when we are at that, I would add that uh, actually, you know, I think I have very often I have an impression that these days those literacies are sort of um, 
mutually shared between me and my students, you know, because very often I lack those literacy. I mean, I lack literacy to be able to read some of the memes, right? I need to be explained, you know, what it is and why is it funny, right? So, and, and this is actually what makes this whole topic fascinating. And um, of course, there is some dangers as well. Um, I think to some extent, we could we could tell that the fact that, that society is getting polarized and, um, and um, divided into, you know, small groups of people who can't really uh, talk to each other or, or can't really discuss, uh, this also may be somehow connected to this new media environment. So I would say that, um, that you know, this aspect m makes it even more important. Um, I mean, uh, th this aspect actually calls for even more in-depth research into, into such topics and, um, and, you know, maybe coming up or at least trying to come up with some solutions to, you know, how can we basically discuss um, social um, issues and, and, and social problems these days? Thank you so much. Uh, you have uh, highlighted the track scope uh, extensively. So from the history of literature, uh, reception and production to the emerging platforms and studies on TikTok. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's um, uh, necessary to say that uh, the tracks are uh, also for, for us and for researchers to actually uh, focus our attention to meet the target uh, uh, area of this track. So in other words, another question is, uh, what is a strong submission or how a strong submission to this track uh, looks and what it should include in your opinion? If I may, again, I'll go back uh, to, to uh, a keyword for me, uh, the experience, right? Uh, for me, what I would look uh, straight away uh, for in a, in a proposal would be um, uh, the experience. So the experience of the either of the researcher, right, or the or the uh, participants or some empirical subjects that have been um, scrutinized for the for the proposed work it can be even an author ethnography and right? i think author ethnographies are very important in this respect so one's own theoretical or theoretically savvy or competence competent very competent uh, reading of a media of course uh, theoretically grounded in that case but also uh, i would welcome uh, you know uh, any any uh, large scale studies empirically verified uh, that use let's say scrapping uh, data from uh, sites that deal with uh, readers or viewers of uh, social media content. So, uh, but for, again, for me, the, the the distinct experience that somebody is trying to, you know, uh, explain, show, and explain would be the the you know the, the, the strongest requirement or the or the most important requirement of a good um, submission. Of course, it goes without saying. It needs to be theoretically grounded. It needs to be. Um, well thought out. It needs to have, uh, you know, a, a structure that is amenable to sharing uh, in, in both ways, sharing the ideas and sharing the, the, the actual work. But again, at the center of it all should be a, a reading experience that is distinct in some particular way for, for our track, at least. Um, yes, I can only second uh, what Lavro has just said. But I would also add that for me, a strong contribution is also um, a contribution that would be um, uh, somehow innovative, you know, um, prompting us to <clears throat> to look in new directions, and that would also mean um, for me that um, a strong contribution is also aware of. Um, I mean, or maybe to frame it better, a strong contribution can also propose um, <clears throat> some some new ways to to. Uh, research how hypertextual form can negotiate, you know, the policies of platforms, right? Because we all know that platforms are also corporations, and you know the recent um, the recent hearings of the main, you know, you know the CEOs of the main uh, um, corporations such as Facebook, Instagram, um, uh, TikTok, and uh, oh, it escaped me what, what the other two were. Uh, uh, in the Senate Congress, you know, uh, the U.S. Um, the, the U.S. Senate um, just showed us uh, to what extent uh, we are kept um, uh, we are kept uh, unaware, you know, as to the details of those of those policies. So, so I'm interested. I personally am interested in how hypertextual form 
um, farms can sort of reverse engineer, you know, um, some of the policies and um, and do it based on, um, for example, analyzing the code, you know, to the extent that it is possible. Because of course, um, we know that code is often proprietary form uh, for for the corporations, so we we don't have access basically to the decisions that shape, you know, um, the policies of the platforms. So that that's also the topic that I think should be somehow tackled by um, researchers uh, working in this field. Thank you very much. And the last question: What are the formats that are accepted? Of course, traditional paper is always welcome, as you know, the form that we are, are all used to, I guess, and uh, familiar with. But considering, you know, the, the topic of the conference and the fact that it is um, uh, focused on hypertext, I would strongly um, encourage people who would like to express themselves basically in digital media. So any interactive form, you know, any kind of uh, digital essay, for example, especially that we have a new form of, um, of uh, publications available, such as uh, the digital review um, uh, edited by Will Lewis and uh, other uh, and and the team uh, you know, at Electronic Book Review. I also have a pleasure to serve as an editor for this outlet. So we we have a new form of um, uh, scholarly publications that are born digital. So I would you know strongly um, strongly encourage people who who are into this uh, area to. Uh, to come forward <laughs> and to contribute also the forums that are not often, I think, passable at the traditional conferences. Especially that this year's theme is creative intelligence. So <laughs> let's be creative and smart, send our submissions. But of course, uh, there will be uh, formal requirements of the submission itself that uh, we will uh, include uh, on our website and in the links that we will uh, share. And I forgot to mention playful uh, submissions as well, you know, because the topic is um, uh, the topic is, I think, um, the, the, the topic may prompt some playful submissions. Like, you know, for example, I, I don't know, maybe network would be interesting, you know, such form that uh, is um, really uh, inspiring and that um, was born within the, within electronic literature field uh, or some other forms, you know. Um, I think we all need more playfulness in academia. And if I may just say it again, a sentence or two, just because I see this track as kind of a, uh, a very timely um, rolling back or circle or circling uh, around because uh, the the um, the new buzzword in except for AI, creative intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. the, the new buzzword in the uh, internet space, digital media space is metaverse, right? And metaverse no. is uh, like Google Earth, also uh, the the let's say. Uh, outcome of a literary text of a novel right uh back from the 1990s so anything that deals with both that deals with the interaction mm -hmm. of how let's say old traditional uh ideas can emerge in uh, a new text and submission in, in in that sense like like we can also imagine something being done in metaverse in some kind of some kind of mechanism or something like that is also uh acceptable for us as you know something that anna mentioned as as an expression of one's own creativity ludic uh experience with the text. Thank you very much. Thank you. It Thank was you. a pleasure to have you and uh, let's invite everyone to Poznań in Poland in September for the Hypertext Conference.